people are disappointed with their city leaders, with se several indictments on city council. I can understand why folks are frustrated with, with politics on the national and also local level. So it's going to be on, on me and the rest of our council and our city leaders to earn that trust back and to work collaboratively to build up our city. A new year brings new leadership to Cincinnati's City Hall. Aftab Puraval takes over as mayor of the Queen City. I talked about my bold vision for economic recovery, for public safety, for affordable housing, and it'll be on all of us to work collaboratively in partnership to accomplish those big things. A conversation with the new mayor about his vision for Cincinnati on this edition of Let's Talk Cincy. From WLWT, this is Let's Talk Cincy, presented by Western and Southern Financial Group. Put our financial strength behind you. Hello everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller and welcome to Let's Talk Cincy. 2022 will be a year of new leadership at Cincinnati City Hall. Cincinnati's new mayor is 39 years old and was born in Xenia, Ohio. He has a law degree from UC and was formerly the Hamilton County Clerk of Courts. Mayor Aftap Pureval is married to Whitney Whitus. They are the proud parents of son Bodie. John London now has more on the mayor's agenda for 2022. Aftab Pureval's transition team calls him the complete package, intelligent, energetic, collaborative, compassionate. He wants City Hall to pour forth deliverable results by early April. Look, it, what people can expect in our first 100 days is bold action. He defines that as specific legislation on economic recovery with racial equity, affordable housing, public safety, and climate action. Once newly elected lawmakers replace the lame duck council, the sticker price for that bold action will be front and center. During the campaign, Puraval would not rule out raising the earnings tax to try to boost the city out of a pandemic economy. Corporate Cincinnati will be adamantly opposed to this. I think that their feeling, along with a lot of other people, is that raising taxes is not going to promote growth. Since election night, Puraval's not indicated whether he's eyeing a bump in the earnings tax. It was rolled back a couple years ago when voters approved a sales tax increase for the bus system. Today, he said economic recovery is his top priority. Our economy has unfortunately been running in place. We've been in, in neutral. Despite the great population growth we've seen over the last 10 years, all of that is hanging in the balance. He's tapped hospital executive Michael Fisher to be a bridge to business. Uh, you know, uh, the big, bold plans also require a vibrant economy and require the tax base to do it. And with me now is the mayor-elect, Aftap Pureval. Thank you very much for starting the year off with Yeah, us. Happy New Year, Curtis. This is great. It's always wonderful to be here at uh, WLWT. Yeah. Hey, we're going to talk about your priorities. Uh, John mentioned some of those in, in his report, but let's, let's start with COVID-19. Yeah. It's hard not to. Um, so talk a little bit about what you think the city might do. I know that just recently, mm. You came out with some 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 plans about COVID. Talk a little bit about that. You know, unfortunately, this pandemic continues to rage on with the Omicron variant. Uh, it really drives home the fact that despite our optimism and hope that we could turn the page on this pandemic, we're still right in the middle of it. Just this week, we're seeing numbers skyrocket in uh, in the state of Ohio and across the country. And it's even more important now uh, to not have COVID fatigue, but rather to, to dig in and to get back to what the science has been telling us for two years now is the best hope to protect ourselves, protect our family, but also get back to what we can consider a normal life, get our economy moving again, because you know it really is unfortunately right now running in place. And those best practices are uh, getting vaccinated, getting boosted, wearing a mask, social distancing, you know, Curtis, my wife is a doctor with Bethesda North. Um, she treats COVID patients every single day. And, and she says on the ground at the front lines that this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. By and large, the people who are being hospitalized, who are very sick, are those who are unvaccinated. So please, please get vaccinated, get boosted, protect yourself, and help us move our city forward. I, I, I know some cities, New York City being one of them, have gone to very strict COVID protocols, you, you don't anticipate us getting 
to that point, at least right now? Well, Ohio is very different. Uh, our state legislature has put forth uh, pretty strict restrictions on what municipalities can do as it relates to um, uh, COVID protocols. But what I can say this is I fully and strongly support private businesses doing what they need to do, whether it's requiring vaccinations or requiring masks in their businesses. Uh, I fully support those efforts that private businesses have the right and should continue to have the right to make those decisions for themselves. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm fully supportive also of what the city's currently doing with its own employees, uh, requiring either a, a vaccine or testing in order to continue to promote best practices and keep us all safe. We're going to talk a little bit about your priorities. Let's just start with, uh, with some of the priorities. First, you, I think you said first 100 days. Yeah, so, you know, what, what is, I think, critically important uh, is making good on the campaign promises that I made for the last year. And just this week, we've already started, even before getting into office, we've already started fulfilling those commitments. Uh, I've taken bold action on the city manager, uh, working with Paula uh, uh, to make sure that we have a effective and professional transition into the new administration. I, I made it very clear that I was interested in a national search to bring in a city manager. Uh, and when I communicated that to, to Paula, uh, she decided uh, in response to that to, to resign. Uh, I've, I've appointed John Kerp, who's formerly the city solicitor for six years, knows the city inside and out. He'll provide us a good professional transition uh, into a national search to find uh, an, a new city manager, into a national search to find a new uh, chief of police. You know, those are the two, I think, top priorities as, as we move forward. The other, the other big priority is, is the budget. Uh, and, and when you show me your budget, I show you your priorities. And, and my priorities from the beginning have been very clear. Economic recovery from this pandemic with racial equity in the center of the frame, climate action, affordable housing, and public safety. That's the agenda to move us forward. Uh, and it's a big agenda. That's right. We're gonna, we're gonna it's a big a, city. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we're going to take a break and talk a little bit more about that. I want to talk uh, more about that national service, Great. too, because that's important. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Curtis Fuller. I'm here with the Mayor-elect of the city of Cincinnati, Aftab Puravall, and uh, you, you mentioned about, well, January 19th is when yep. uh, Paula Muthing will, will step down. And the chief of police, I mean, those are two important positions. Has the chief even mentioned yet to you when he might step down? Yeah, I, he, I think he's looking at the first quarter of the year. Uh, we've had um, uh, several meetings talking about public safety, talking about you know, what our goals are coming in with a new administration, and he's been an incredible partner. So has Paula Boggs Muthing been mm -hmm. incredibly generous, incredibly supportive, and, and, and very professional through this, through this whole process. You know, you're right. Those are two, you know, critical pieces to the city's governance. Um, and what I'm looking for in a, in a police chief uh, is a law enforcement professional, someone who can command the respect of not only the uh, police officers and professionals working at CPD, but also the community, someone who believes uh, very passionately about the tenets of our national model, the collaborative agreement, and most importantly, has demonstrated a real commitment to it through action and not just words. Uh, I think a national search is important. However, I, th I think we've got some very interesting and very capable internal candidates as well we're looking for the best and the brightest. That's what Cincinnati deserves, and, and that's what I'm looking for. You, you say the best and the brightest. Uh, it, it's interesting because uh, our star quarterback <laughs> made headlines when he talked a little bit about Cincinnati not having a lot to do. Yeah. Uh, even though it has great arts and sports. But it is interesting because you will hear a lot of young professionals sort of say the same thing that Joe Burrow said. Uh, and I would imagine that that will come up in discussion. You know, what kind of city is Cincinnati? Does it have a lot to do? Yeah. So. Well, look, I, you know, I think um, our quarterback who just threw for over 500 <laughs> yards, the, the fourth uh, most yards 
in any franchise, our franchise record. Uh, look, I think he was. I think he was joking. I think it was taken out of context. I, in fact, tweeted at him and, and suggested we hang out so I could show him some <laughs> bars and restaurants. I'm, I'm really encouraged, frankly, by mm -hmm. our food scene, by our nightlife scene. You know, we've got a lot of momentum now. There's, there's no, you know, there's no um, avoiding the fact that the pandemic has been disproportionately. Uh, hard on our our live events, on our our nightlife, on our bars and restaurants. But you know we have made incredible progress on that front. You know with the with the icon and the new music venue on the banks, with the development of the banks in the first place and an OTR. Cincinnati continues to go through a re renaissance, and nightlife is part of that. But I think you know I think if there's any truth to to this sentiment, mm. it is that Cincinnati has a brand problem. Despite the fact that we are the literal home of brand marketing at Procter and Gamble, my my own and my my That's old right. employer, yeah. we, we just don't talk about our city very well. And the truth of the matter is, Curtis, Cincinnati is dope. I mean, we are <laughs> we are competitively. Uh, priced for cities were in the national context really really affordable to live here we have the best public high school in the in the state we've got the third best children's hospital in the in the world we've got incredible corporate partners here in Cincinnati it's a beautiful city uh, we've got dense diverse neighborhoods that are walkable with incredible historic architecture you know if you're not applying to the University of Cincinnati and if you're not investing your dollars here in Cincinnati I think you're crazy. That's a story that I want to tell to the rest of the country to really have a stronger brand about, you know, if you can live anywhere in the country now with remote working, mm -hmm. I want you to live in Cincinnati. Interesting. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, you're going to have a lot of new faces down at City Hall with you. We're going to talk about that collaboration when Let's Talk Cincy returns. Change is always the main word you will hear anytime there is new leadership. As Jatera McGee tells us in this report, the call for change is coming inside and outside City Hall. I talked about my bold vision for economic recovery, for public safety, for affordable housing, and it'll be on all of us to work collaboratively in partnership to accomplish those big things. Cincinnati's newly elected mayor, Aftab Purival, setting the tone for himself and a new city council, perhaps the most diverse leadership team in city history. We can't put, uh, put our heads in the sand and act like now that because we have a diverse council, everything is, is, is good. Scotty Johnson was a Cincinnati police officer for 33 years, including during the unrest in 2001. A number one priority is disparity, first and foremost. We asked city residents what kind of change they want to see. Among their answers, improved police community relations and an emphasis on equity. In terms of government contracts, also in terms of uh, low income housing. I mean, I like the changes that's happened in Over the Rhine. But I think there also needs to be a concerted effort to bring um, low income and low and working class income into the central city. I'm a big fan of anything to make it more livable, less cars, less priority for traffic and more for people walking, biking. Another new face to council, Mark Jeffries, wants to deliver on that front. Safety in terms of pedestrian safety, making our streets safer. I think we have a crisis on our streets. The second part of safety is around gun violence in particular. Community members are begging for solutions that work to address youth violence. And we're going to have to make sure that we make the biggest investment in young people that this city has ever seen. We need to connect them to jobs and opportunities and create spaces for them to be young people. A big agenda, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, you, you talked about the earnings tax. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'd love to. Let me be clear. I do not support raising the earnings tax. I think it's a bad idea to raise taxes in the pandemic. What I'm concerned about, however, is the way that uh, remote work is going to mm. affect our budget for our basic services. If folks are uh, uh, our, we're projected because of the earnings tax work from home refund. We're projected to take a 16% hit for our uh, earnings tax revenue that funds basic services. 
that equates to $100 million that's going to go away. Now, the federal government, um, Joe Biden's administration, has done a good job of flooding municipalities with resources to, uh, to be a stopgap, a bridge for that loss in revenue, but that's only for two years. After that, we have a real challenge on our hands. How are we going to account for this, uh, for this shortfall if this pandemic continues and if we continue to see these kinds of budget deficits? Uh, so there's even more of an own. That doesn't mean we need to raise taxes, but what it means is there's even more of an onus for us to be growing and to be creative about how we're funding our local governments. Before I talk about the uh, collaboration locally, uh, you, you went to the White House. That's right. Uh, t talk a little bit about that experience uh, being at the White House. Well, it was the first time I've ever been at the White House, and, and I was sitting with the, the New York mayor, with the Atlanta mayor, with the Seattle mayor, with the Boston mayor, so I was just trying to play it cool, right? Like, <laughs> oh, no big deal, I'm in the Oval Office. But I was very excited. Um, but but what, what I was really struck by was how consistent the Biden administration's priorities are with, with my own priorities. We, we, talk, we heard it in that package just now from residents. They're looking for safety. They're looking for youth employment. They're looking for, uh, uh, for walkable uh, uh, communities that have good access to bike lanes and, and are ultimately safe. Racial equity is also a priority. And those are all the priorities for the Biden administration. Now look, we're, we're seeing a massive investment of over a trillion dollars on infrastructure across the country, and we've got real needs. You know, first and foremost, the Brent Spence Bridge. Curtis, if, if this infrastructure package doesn't get that done, then I'm not sure it ever will. So that's our top priority. But we've also got lead in our water pipes. We've got to take care of that. We've got challenges with affordability for broadband and access for broadband around our communities. And of course, we want to make sure when we're investing these large dollars into infrastructure projects like the Brent Spence Bridge, that we're not just thinking about our bridges and roads for cars and trucks, but also for cyclists and pedestrians. Mm. Let's talk about the collaboration. You, you have nine people, and you, you <laughs> said to me before we started this, you know, having to make nine phone calls is not easy. So yeah. talk about how that you've been working with them now and hope to work with them in the future. We've been working really, really well together. Uh, what, what, what strikes me is how consistent all of our messages were and are. They, they ran, you know, eight or nine independent council races. I ran my own mayor's race, but we fundamentally agree on the big challenges facing our city. And I think that will help us change the culture at City Hall, which has unfortunately devolved in some instances into a food fight, into personal attacks, into partisanship. I'm optimistic that through collaboration, through consistent communication, uh, we can really focus on what matters to the people of Cincinnati, which, which I've very clearly laid out with my comprehensive policy plans. The hit of corruption mm -hmm. at City Hall, yeah. I mean, uh, while you can try to move beyond that, yeah. have you been hearing that from the public still, that talk about what happened at City Hall? You know, I, I've, I've heard it less and less from the public, uh, frankly, but it's still, it's still a priority for myself and for the incoming Council, you know, with several indictments uh, on council in the past years, it, it's a real problem for Cincinnati, not just for corruption's sake, although that's important, but because if people don't trust their city leaders, they're not going to move here. They're not going to invest their dollars here. They're not going to stay here and help us grow and help us flourish. So we absolutely have to get that right. Now, you know, voters had a very clear choice, particularly for mayor, between change and status quo, and they overwhelmingly, in, hit, in a historic margin, voted for change. And, and that's the charge that City Council and I have, to change, you know, certainly the policies coming out of City, Council, City Hall, but also the culture that's there. When we come back and before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit more about your vision Great. Of, of Cincinnati. We're going to do that when Let's Talk Cincy returns. I've enjoyed this conversation with our Me too. mayor elect. Uh, I asked Ted Berry once, how would you describe you to other people? So I want mm. you to answer that. And okay. then if you had to paint a canvas, what would Cincinnati look like after your four years? Yeah. Um, 
Well, uh, the f answer to the first question, um, that's interesting. Uh, you, you've, uh, you've asked me a, a question that I need well, a moment to think about. So well, let, let me, me tell you what Ted Berry said. He yeah, said, great. He said, that's a stumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I agree. So I guess what I would say, um, uh, we were talking about my wife in the break. So what yeah. my wife would say, I think, is that I'm fun, I'm energetic, and she would look for a word for me to be... Um, uh, to be constructive, so I think she would say that I'm distracted. <laughs> um, and what I want Cincinnati to look look like, you know, what what is what is of paramount concern to me is that we continue to grow as a city, that we continue to grow our population, our tax base, our skyline, so we can have the resources necessary to do the big things that we're talking about. But what is what what is also very very important to me is that we improve the lives for black people in our city. Mm. Uh, we continue, unfortunately, to be segregated. We continue to feel the effects of systemic racism, um, feel the effects of racial disparities that continue to exist today. And if we want to achieve all of these big things that we keep talking about, that, that people on the street are talking about, that new council members are talking about, then we have to uh, we have to make sure and keep racial equity a priority in the center of the frame, certainly for black people who are here right now, but also for Hispanic and Asian Americans. You know, our Asian American and Hispanic population, based on the new census, is only 2 or 3%. For, for two demographics, the fastest growing communities in the country, for that number to be so low in Cincinnati means that we're going to have trouble growing into the future. So we've got to fix that as well. Wow. And, and you use the term equity, and people should know that is, that is a deliberate term. Yeah. A, a lot of people want to say equality, but equity is the key, key word. It is. Equity is, is the key word. And, and in my view, equity means making sure that we have more black ownership, hmm. more black ownership of homes, of businesses, and of neighborhoods. Not just a seat at the table, which is equality, but ownership of that table, ownership of that seat. That, that will hopefully create a pipeline of wealth that will grow our black middle class and uh, start to change the face and the priorities of our city. Having fun so far? I know it's a lot of work. It right? is a lot of work, but it is fun. I mean, look, being, being the mayor of Cincinnati is, is a dream job, and it's, it's, been, it's been a roller coaster. It's been uh, thrilling. It, it's been wonderful to be in different parts of the of the country and get to brag about Cincinnati. What I, what I love about this role, part of what I love about this role, is I'm the main cheerleader for our community. And Curtis, there are so many wonderful things to brag about. Well, good luck to you. We hope that you'll come back here many times Absolutely. over the next few years. Thank you. Well, that does it for this edition of Let's Talk Cincy. Thanks for joining us, and our thanks again to Cincinnati's. Mayor-elect, Aftab Pure Ball. We'll see you again next week.